one additional little commercial before we get into our message today. Please don't do what I do when commercials come on. Don't mute me. Don't fast forward me. It'll be brief. There will be a Galentine's event for the girls ages 8 through young adult. Saturday, February 10th, from 2 to 5 at the home of Madeline and Molly Mason. Address will be in the bulletin and on the sign-up sheet. Please bring candy or something to decorate cookies. Galentine's event. I guess us guys are going to have to do a guy and guy and times event. Does that work? That doesn't work as good. But keep in mind that. All right. So last week we mentioned a verse that would be great for us to commit to memory. I want us to uh, reference that this morning and, and work on it. It's Psalm 68, verse 5. Remember that there it says, uh, in describing God, Father of the fatherless and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. So let's work on that together. Can you say that with me? Father of the fatherless and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. I guess we need to do that one more time. <laughs> Guys, put up the next slide. Help him out here. <coughs> There we go. Say this with me. Father of the fatherless and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. All right, good. And then in the very next verse in Psalm 68, in verse 6, it begins by saying, God sets the lonely in a home. So that's a pretty good verse, too. And our theme uh, this year as... As a church that we're going to work through, as we sort of introduced last week, comes from James chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, and we're referring to this as the year of pure religion. If you want a little more information on that, check out the article on the front of the bulletin this week, and there's some more information there. There was a, a hit television show that ran from 1982 to 1989 that depicted an, an upper-middle-class family, the Keatons, and, and, and that family, they, they sort of demonstrated an interesting mix. Uh, Mom and Dad Keaton were sort of reformed 60s hippies and very leftward-leaning in their politics. They had this brilliant son, uh, Alex Keaton, uh, played very memorably by Michael J. Fox, and he was the exact opposite of his parents, uh, true blue Reagan Republican. Reagan was president uh, in these years. And of course, that was much to the parents' horror, of course. Uh, and then older sister Mallory, she was uh, more than a little bit of an airhead, uh, kindly but not really knowing what's going on most of the time. And then younger sister Jennifer was a, a true tomboy. And the, the comedy, the, the tension that created the comedy was built around the idea, of course, that you know, mom and dad's views were so diametrically opposed to their high-achieving son and, and just the fact that everybody in the family was so different. They just seemed to be uh, different personalities all around. And, and the tension was resolved each episode with the basic fact that despite all the differences, uh, they were family. They shared the same blood and, and thus they loved one another and they came together uh, around that. It was a good show. Um, I was alive at the time, believe it or not, and, and I enjoyed it. And, and it, it basically, it capitalized on the famous proverb that we have promoted in our culture which says, blood is thicker than water. Blood is thicker than water. Do you believe that? Where, where did that come from, that saying? There's actually, if you, if you search it, uh, there's some disagreement about that, and we don't really have to go into all of that for our purposes, but pretty much everybody agrees that 
when people say it today, when, when we say it today, that they mean that, that family ties are the strongest ties, that um, nothing is closer ultimately than blood bonds. Now, in my experience, I would say that sometimes that is true, and sometimes it's not. In fact, sometimes, you know, I've seen where people that uh, believe that uh, 100% get themselves into trouble. That is, uh, their, their loyalty to family can supersede every other loyalty because after all, blood is thicker than water. And that, that would even include loyalty to God and to God's family. I have seen families change their entire view of right and wrong, upset their entire belief system because a family member changed their view. So in that case, they're, they're truly living out that old proverb, blood is thicker than water. However, we need to realize that that proverb is not in the word of God. It's not one of the proverbs of God's word. Yes, God emphasizes family and he promotes family. Scripture is often a story of God working through families. He, he encourages family and, and so does his word. We often talk about it as we study God's word, the importance of family and how to be stronger in families. But we, we need also to remember that it was none other than the Son of God who said something that contradicted this proverb. Remember this exchange, these words of the Lord in Mark chapter 3, beginning at verse 31. It says there that, his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who were around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God... He is my brother and sister and mother. Jesus seemed to think that something was thicker than blood. And of course, he was right. In fact, I, I would suggest to you this morning that, that actually water is thicker than blood. Now, of course, I'm talking spiritually in a spiritual way, not physically. As Jesus was speaking there in Mark chapter 3, you know, he wasn't saying those things to insult his mother or the rest of his physical family. He wasn't being disrespectful of the people he loved. But he was pointing out an important truth. There are more important bonds than physical blood bonds. He said that being bound together in the will of God was more important than sharing genetic material. Or, and maybe to state it a little bit more proverbially, he said water is thicker than blood. I want us to think about another passage together this morning. It's the opening words of 1 John. 1 John 1. I'm going to read three verses there. I hope these are familiar verses to you. But John opens his first letter by saying, writing this, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands, concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it, and 
proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest in us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Now, John's subject is, of course, Jesus. Jesus was that which was from the beginning, which they had heard, which they had seen, which they had looked upon and even touched. And, and his life was the life that they were testifying to, that they were proclaiming to people and telling them that Jesus was the key to having eternal life. But look a little bit closer there at verse 3, if you will, where it says, That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, again, that's Jesus that he's referring to, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. I want you to notice there what Jesus does for us. He brings us into a fellowship that we never had before. A fellowship, a family that we could never create on our own. A family we could never build or even conceive of. He brings us into that by his work, by his power. Remember the, the verse that we referred to at the beginning this morning, there in Psalm 68, the sixth verse where it says of God, he sets the lonely in a family. Maybe we can understand it a little bit better now, what, he, what he's getting at in that psalm. How does God give a person without father or mother a family? How does he take a lonely person who maybe has been abandoned by their family of origin or, or forced out of it because of any number of factors. How does he give them a family? Well, it's through Jesus. It's in Jesus. John said, we proclaim Jesus to you so that you may have fellowship, family, with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus. Folks, friends, brethren, water is thicker than blood. Water is thicker than blood. Jesus told a man named Nicodemus the same thing. Gospel of John chapter 3 is the, the record of their conversation. And Nicodemus belonged to a, a group of people who believed that blood was the most important thing, that blood bonds were the highest possible bonds in the world, and they were loyal to those bonds above all else in life. But Jesus said to Nicodemus that night, you must be born again. And he said to him, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. You see, water is thicker than blood. Then we have these inspired words from the Apostle Paul, Galatians chapter 3, where he wrote, for in Christ Jesus... You are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. 
Yes, it's true that water is thicker than blood. Through water, that is baptism into Christ, anybody can be brought together. Anybody can be brought together. There's nothing else in this world that can do that. Just watch the news. Just read the paper and see the truth of that statement. But through Jesus, getting into Jesus, anybody can be brought together. Anybody can have a true family. The lonely can find rich fellowship. Nationalities that are at each other's throats, literally, can become brothers and sisters. People who speak different languages can share one tongue. Republicans and Democrats, liberals and conservatives, right wing and left wing can be made one in one place only at the foot of the cross of Jesus where he shed his blood for all. Truly the race is won at the cross. Years and years and years ago, I was teaching a class in church. I was young and inexperienced. It was a class, at least that night, on family, the importance of family. And uh, there were about 50 or 60 college students in this class. I wasn't far removed from college myself. We had been discussing the importance of respecting and obeying parents, always a popular theme with young people. And in the midst of that class, the, there was a young student who raised her hand and asked a question I wasn't prepared to answer because my experience was so different from hers. Had to do with the fact that, that the man that she had known as her father was not a godly man, was in fact an abusive man, had in fact abandoned her mother and her siblings and and just on and on it went, her story, her experience with her father. She even said that she had a lot of trouble thinking of God as father because of the terrible image of father that, that she had known as a young girl. How could she respect him? How could she obey him? How could she think of God the father in a positive way? How could she ever have a positive view of family at all? Well, I was not ready for that. And I'm sure that my answer that night wasn't very helpful. I, I should have talked about Jesus a lot more as I answered. I should have talked about how God sets the lonely in a family and, and how water actually is thicker than blood because it is. I look around this auditorium this morning and I see all kinds of people that I am closer to that I am bound more tightly to than many of the people in this world that I am blood related to. And I praise God for that. And I thank God for you, my family. Would you pray with me? Our Father, you are so good. 
And though we fall short, we are so grateful to call you Father. Thank you for calling us into a family. Father, help us not to be selfish with this great gift you've given us of spiritual family, but to be willing to share it with others. There are so many who need you and need this fellowship. And we pray that we will be open to new brothers and sisters and that you will continue to work among us to call people into a family. Thank you, God, for your goodness in Jesus, your son, who offered himself for us. And we pray that we will live for him and hold up his name high this week. We pray in his name, Jesus. Amen. This morning, as, as we conclude, we offer Jesus' invitation to any who need to respond this morning. For any need you may have, spiritual or otherwise, if we can help you in your relationship with God, if, if we can teach you more, whatever it might be, uh, we hope you'll have the courage to come before us now or afterward find one of us and, and, and ask what, what we can do for you. Think about that while we stand and sing this song.